guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead and I'm doing something today that is kind of a big deal. At least it's a big deal for me. I am going to attempt, hopefully successfully, to make chili for 200 people. <sighs> it's a little stressful. I've never done this before. I am not a caterer. You know, I'm just used to cooking for Sean, myself, and our seven children. That's my normal. This is a little bit bigger than my normal. So uh, this is gonna be a several day process, but I'm gonna use the camera, bring you guys along, film it, and see my all of my successes and my very, very few failures, right? We're gonna be positive about this. So <laughs> I'm gonna get started today and uh, We'll see what happens over the next several days. So, here we go. Okay, so I already have my first dilemma. I am cooking up 40 pounds of meat with onions and peppers mixed in for this chili. And I have this roaster oven that I got at Goodwill for $14. I thought that was a really good deal, but I got it like a year ago. I don't think I can fit 40 pounds of meat in this roaster oven. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I was going to put part of it in this and the other part in this big monster cast iron skillet and just try to cook things up that way. But I just realized this was bad planning on my part. We are having a egg roll in a bowl for supper tonight, which is a Trim Healthy Mama recipe. And we use the monster skillet to make that up, that supper up. So um, I may put this back in the refrigerator and cook it up after we're finished with supper. I'm gonna go ahead and get going on the roaster oven. Let's see how much I can fit in the roaster and then I can make decisions after that. So, okay, moving forward. Okay, so I put 20 pounds of the meat in the roasting pan and now I'm going to start getting the onions diced up. According to my calculations for that 20 pounds, I'm gonna need about 12 cups of diced onions in there. So I'm gonna use the food processor for that. And I'm gonna add about three cups of green peppers, which I already have done. Those are from the garden. And garlic, we have uh, garlic from our garden as well, but I'll need to mince some of that up too. So I'm gonna get this process started. All right, these are green peppers from our garden from this year, and they've already been diced up and put in the freezer. So I'm gonna pour out three cups of these, add them in there to the beef, and uh, then get going on getting the onions prepped for the food processor. All right, now this braid of garlic here is uh, what we pulled in from the garden last year. We are still working on last year's crop of garlic, and I'll show you this year's crop here in just a little bit, but you can see I've already cut uh, most of this off. This is empty even though it's a braid. It's just the braided stems, I guess of the garlic and there's just some random bulbs down there at the bottom But mostly what's left is here at the top. So I'm going to cut off several of these and That's what we'll use for our minced garlic for this chili to start off with this and this is this year's harvest this is just the hard neck garlic we don't um, braid the hard neck this is soft neck that's why you're able to braid it because it's soft the hard neck you can't braid because it is hard all in here so this is this year's hard neck harvest and then I'll show you back in the dining room our soft neck harvest from this year. And here is this year's soft neck. Uh, Sarah has two big braids hanging up on our coat hooks here 
and just going all the way down pretty much to the floor so we have a nice crop of garlic now of course we are going to use some of these as seed for you know next year's harvest too so not all of this will be consumed in food all right here's my three cu cups of green peppers i'm going to go ahead and add them in here to the roaster and i'm going to get the onions going in the food processor and see if i can get those diced up quickly okay going with plan b for the onions so the food processor did it quickly but basically it just turns it into a mush for the onions i don't want mush i want diced onions so i'm getting out this gadget that a viewer sent to us and i've done several pieces and it is working well so i'm going to go with this instead for the remainder of the onions and i still have more here i can chop up until i get enough for this batch so i'm just going to keep on plugging away at it I have to get going on the garlic too. Okay, I will say that little gadget just worked super quick. That is a great gadget. And I've gone ahead, I put those onions in. I haven't diced up any more because I think this looks like a lot. And I might just add onion powder or something if I feel like the end product needs more onion, maybe. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'll just kind of see how this goes. I'm going to work on trying to mix all this up here a little bit and uh, get the garlic in there too. And I have no clue how long this is going to take to cook. I have no idea what temperature I should have it at. Don't know what I'm doing, but uh, hopefully it all works out well in the end. I'm just going to go with the flow here. All right, I have the garlic all minced up. I used the little gadget again. It didn't get it quite small enough, so I did have to do it with a knife afterwards, but it really helped with that first just chop of all of it. So I'm gonna take all this garlic now, go ahead and add it to the beef, onions, and green peppers. I have gone ahead and cranked this thing up so that it'll cook, and because um, I still have the other half to go and uh, I'm just stirring it up pretty uh, pretty often here and I hope it goes quickly. So I will touch base with you guys again. Okay, so first batch is done and we're draining, oh, is it gonna focus? Let's see, there it goes. And draining it out here, trying to get the fat and stuff out of there. I'm getting ready for the second batch here. So I'm getting things chopped up. Once it is drained, we're putting it in this other pot here. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit more before I put it in Ziploc baggies and then we'll freeze it. So I can pull it out later on this week to actually make the chili. What baby? You want more raisins? Okay, just a minute. All right, first batch all done over here. Second batch just started. So I do have to finish mincing up the garlic and I'll add that in too, but uh, I think we got a system now. So this should be the last of the meat. All right, first batch is in baggies and getting ready to go out to the freezer. We'll just leave it in there for a couple days until I'm ready to actually put the chili together. Are you being cute? What's that? What, that's the meat for the chili. It's gonna go out to the freezer now. And I tell you what, guys, here, let me grab this. This uh, vegetable chopper thing. I'm gonna add one of these to our Amazon store. This thing was so, so handy. And the one that the viewer sent uh, our family here came with all these little extra attachments and stuff. I don't even know what all of them do, but I, highly recommend one of these gadgets because it made the chopping up of the onions so much easier. What, baby? <laughs> you just wanted my attention. Yeah, I get it. All right, back to the second batch. Getting the last batch put in bags before we take it out to the freezer. It's late. It's after midnight. <laughs> But we got it done. We can mark this off the list.
still can't figure out why this batch was more yeah. than the other batch. All so. Other bag. so, I don't know. It wasn't divided up evenly, I guess. Okay, guys, we are in the middle of making the chili right now, and I totally forgot to pick up the camera. So, things are in process. In case you haven't picked up on it, we are now at the church building in the fellowship hall in the kitchen, and it's busy right now. We have friends that have come to um, volunteer and help us, so it's so, so much appreciated. There are, let's see, the veggie tray stuff going on now and tons and tons of cans of beans and tomato sauce and everything being opened up right now. So I'll do a quick spin around the kitchen and show you what's going on to make chili for 200 people. Okay, this is where the chili for 200 people comes into play. Big monster pots that the church has let us use and the meat, you know, you saw us uh, make up the meat and we've had it frozen, so it is now almost thawed, but not totally. So we are gonna finish the thawing process here in the pots. Currently have tomato sauce and some crushed tomatoes in here, but uh, we're gonna get going on adding some more of the ingredients. So I went through first and I put all the cans of tomato sauce in here and they were the big, I went with the 29 ounce cans of tomato sauce and I think I have 10 cans in here at this point. And I can always add more if I need to. And now we're putting the crushed tomatoes in and I believe I have 13 cans of crushed tomatoes ready to go in. Yeah, 13 I think. So that's what we're putting in. We're trying to hit enough chili for 200 people. And we're eyeballing it and we'll just see what we end up with. And then once this is done, I'll come back and start on the pinto beans and the kidney beans in there. I reassure you that we will be taking out all the lids while dumping them. Hopefully, unless we don't forget some. Hopefully no one finds a lid in their bowl of chili. Yes, if they did, oh, no. it's all her fault, not it's mine. It's not my fault. Oh yes, it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> All right, the meat is just about all thawed out, and I'm starting to add the chili powder. And I'm trying to be conservative with it because I don't want it to be too hot. I am not used to making chili in three massive pots. I'm used to one pot of chili, and my measurement works for the one pot of chili. So we'll see what we end up with. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and start putting the beans in. The meat is just about thawed out. All right, so now I've got the pinto beans and the kidney beans here in the chili. I've added a little bit of uh, chili powder, but I do need to add some more. I have started adding the spinach here. Here's a pot with some spinach in it. So for all those that are traumatized by the fact that I put spinach in my chili, it's really not much. It's just enough to, I think it makes it look pretty. And Miss Mary agreed. She <laughs> said she thought it looked pretty too. So this is uh, what it's gonna look like here in the end. I'm going to start uh, taste testing it a little bit here. I don't wanna put too much chili powder in, but it definitely needs more at this point. So we are getting close to the end of the chili saga. The uh, countertop is pretty well uh, wiped out. All right, one last video from the day before. We're gonna start cleaning things up. I am going to, here, let me show you what we ended up with, the three big massive pots. And fortunately, they have a really nice, huge refrigerator here Then all of these pots will fit in there for overnight. So this is what it ended up looking like. A nice, thick chili with um, a little bit of spinach in there just for color. And then the big, this is the big daddy pot right here. That's a big one. So I'm hoping this feeds 200 people. Of course, we'll also have the hot dogs and stuff have. too. And I'm gonna leave these things here overnight in case when we heat everything up tomorrow, if we need to add any more crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, we'll do a taste test to see if the chili powder and salt are okay. But uh, otherwise we are calling it on the food tonight and we'll be back tomorrow for the actual meet and greet and we'll see if i have enough did i cook too much or not enough all right guys so that was the last video that i took that was the day before the meet and greet when we were doing all the meal prep and things like that so 
in case you haven't watched some of the previous videos that we've done, we had plenty of chili. We had loads and loads of chili and we did not run out. So as a matter of fact, I have a whole bunch of chili in gallon Ziploc bags in the deep freeze out in the summer kitchen and we will have chili for leftovers for a while. So it's good. Um, everybody seemed to enjoy the taste of it. I did get compliments on it. So I think it turned out good and uh, leftovers are always great too. So, okay, um, I am gonna put the recipe in the description box below, but I'm gonna give you guys my normal recipe. The recipe that just calls for two pounds of ground beef and you know, normal amounts for a regular pot and you can double triple do whatever you need to do in your circumstance so check the description box for that it is a nice thick chili that is just great in a bowl but really good over um, hot dogs or you know something like that because it's thick and not soupy um, also um, I don't know if you know, our family has an Amazon storefront and what this is is basically it's just a place where we put products that our family uses, things that we love, things that we recommend. And I did put one of those little veggie chopper gadgets in our family's Amazon storefront. I'm gonna have the link for that in the description box too. And so if you would like to get one, the way it works is you order it, it's delivered to your home for you to use, but we get a little bit of a commission because you ordered it using our link. So I'll put that in the description box as well. And I can't think of anything else. I feel like I'm forgetting something that I wanted to tell you guys, but it's, um, it's gone right now. So I've been busy, um, baked bread this morning. We're making granola today, just lots of things going on, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. Sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe you for whatever crazy reason, I don't know. So please make sure you're subscribed. And if you could tell your family and friends to watch Ozark Family Homestead, it would help our family's channel grow. So thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.